What is the weirdest thing you had to do at someone else's house because of their culture slash religion? So, I was invited to my friend's grandmother's home for Thanksgiving. I was new to the area and had no family nearby, so I graciously accepted. My buddy, Jason, gave me the breakdown of his extended family that was going to be in attendance. His parents were divorced but would both be attending. His grandparents were married but legally separated and lived apart, but grandfather would be attending. His uncle Carl would be there with his male or a bride and their young son. His other uncle Ted was openly gay and battling AIDS. He and his lover would also be there. So I have set the stage, you can probably picture all of them in your mind. In person, it exceeded my imagination. Ted's boyfriend wore cowboy chaps to dinner. They were all very colorful and animated, the pre-dinner discussions were riveting. As we were seated for the meal, Jason's grandmother, Sarah, took out an Altoids tin, took two, and began passing it around the table. I watched as everyone took one to two and immediately swallowed them with a drink. Jason got the tin and did the same. I asked him, why is everyone swallowing Altoids before supper? They all laughed. He said, oh, these are Valium. We learned several years ago that as we gather for Thanksgiving, we drink and arguments ensue. So one year my uncle said, we should all just take a Valium at the beginning of the meal so we can all just chill the F out. They all laughed hysterically and agreed. I passed on the offer and handed the tin to Jason's mom as next in line. And as the evening played out, they all essentially zoned out during dinner, no fights transpired, and they considered it a successful Thanksgiving. I would have never imagined this would happen, but it was a damn fun experience. When I was 11 I stayed at my aunt's house over the school holidays with my 13 years old brother. She had a rule that we couldn't watch any TV shows that she considered impressionable. That meant no cartoons, namely Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon. We missed the end of a Cell Saga. My brother was pissed, he hasn't let it go to this day, over 20 years later. I worked for a rental car company in an Orthodox Jewish community. A customer rushed in on a Friday evening and asked to be driven home immediately because if we didn't make it to his house by sundown he would have to get out of the car and walk the rest of the way due to the Sabbath, he used an app on his phone to tell him the exact time of sundown each day. I didn't have a driver available to I just told him to go home and I'll come by his house later to grab the car. A half hour later I arrive at his house. Husband is nowhere to be found, and the following scenario ensues with his wife. My husband left the keys on our bedside table and I'm not allowed to touch them. Can you come in and grab them please? I awkwardly follow her into her bedroom and grab them from the bedside table. Can I ask one more favor? Do you mind unplugging the house for me? I then follow her into her basement and enter a room where there are literally 15 to 20 different electrical cords coming through holes into the walls and ceiling, and through a tangled series of different outlet strips are all consolidated into one master plug going into a standard wall outlet. She points at it and asks me to unplug it. I do. She thanks me. I leave. I had a lot of wild experiences in five years working that job. This one was definitely top five. Went to a friend's house for dinner a lovely meal. The whole family cleaned their plates of food then turned them over and ate dessert on the back of their plates like it was the most normal thing in the world. I copied them just to be polite. Drank slightly chocolatey water for a month. I think this counts. Years back I was prospecting for a field site on a very remote island in the South Pacific. It was sufficiently remote that having me in the neighborhood was something of a spectacle, so as I made trips out to villages from my home village, I was fated along the way. I'd get to a village and the local headman, and I would get to talking, and they'd have a nice feast. These guys aren't entirely cut off from the world, so one nice trade good they had was powdered milk and oval time. On arriving at the second village, I noticed that they weren't exactly well-to-do, but out came the oval time. Not wanting to use up their supplies, I foolishly interrupted the preparation to tell them that was enough. They looked confused but handed over water with just a bit of oval time floating at the top. It was wretched. But trying to be polite, I drank it all. And smiled. Word got around so every village I went to thereafter was informed of my preference. Couldn't exactly correct them at this point as somebody might have been insulted, so I drank it. Kinda wonder if the next visitor benefited from my blunders in protocol. We got yelled at for playing that devil game again. We were playing Mario Kart and Bowser kept freaking his mom out. So we muted it and all was fine from then on. Meanwhile his little brother was literally playing Diablo 2 at the time in the same room. But he already had it muted so it wasn't a problem I guess. I had a good friend whose family were wealthy and very big on some weird sort of gift giving. Basically there were two things. You could not give them a present, no gifts at birthdays, Christmas, etc. If you gave them a gift they would either politely refuse or donate it. You always received a gift if you went to their house, even if it was for an afternoon. 
I remember going to my friend's house when I was 8 or 9, 1998-1999, and them giving me a PlayStation and each time I went over they'd give me a new game, which continued until they gave me a Nintendo GameCube. Very weird, and it wasn't because I was poor, we lived in the same area etc. This recently repeated itself when I visited my friend's house, now lives with his own family, and when I was leaving his wife was trying to give me a bottle of scotch and my daughter a fucking Nintendo Switch. Edit. They were Middle Eastern, not really sure what religion, his dad was a property developer and investor, this was in Australia Sydney. It just felt awkward after a while. Edit 2. Told my mate about this and he answers some of the questions for you all. His family are part of the house of Saad, but are not in the part that has any power or line of success unless like the other 10,000 people die. His last name isn't Saad so this was news to me, but he made it clear it means nothing unless you are part of the inner circle. The gift giving thing was slash as part of their family custom and they weren't slash did not expect you to refuse. They didn't accept gifts because they just purchased anything they wanted and they made their children do chores to earn items so they had an appreciation for money. The gifts, while expensive for most didn't really register, as spending a few hundred bucks wouldn't make a dent, they also regifted tons of shit, he said they probably had like 30 playstations in their cupboard. His family also didn't want kids to be jealous of their son, because being an Arab in Australia was already pretty shit. He has a cupboard like his parents' house, he doesn't have gaming consoles normally, as when he gets those he normally sells them, because hey why not? He isn't accepting applications for new friends. I guess this qualifies as culture. My sister was dating a man that had been raised in a nudist colony. He took her to meet his family at their house at the colony. She was a tad surprised when his mother immediately says there's a hook on the bathroom door for your clothes. My sister proceeds to spend the entire evening naked with his folks. Her BF had told her before they went that it would be her option, but I guess his parents didn't think so. When I lived in Antwerp, Belgium, I once was stopped by an elderly woman on the street. She was asking for help inside her house. Guiding me through a house where the temperature was way too hot, she stopped at every radiator and asked me to turn them down. In the end we went to the kitchen, where some Jewish women and children were watching me silently while I was putting all the burning gas stoves on a low heat. Then she showed me out, thanked me and closed the door. In Antwerp there is a big community of Hasidic Jews, I can imagine this was during Sabbath. I remember going to my Swedish friend's house. And while we were playing in his room, his mom yelled that dinner was ready. And check this. He told me to wait in his room while they ate. That S was wild. Something like this happened once when I was a kid. I am in the mid-30s now and still remember it. It was so fucking weird. Stayed at this kid's house who I knew but not too well. His older sister was friends with my older sister and they were having some sort of sleepover at my house and the brother asked me if I wanted to sleep over at his house. So to get to the story. I go there and already I feel weird about the whole thing. I don't know why I remember this specific detail, but I remember the house being all dimly lit. It just felt weird at the time. We play in his room and then like an hour later his parents call him for dinner and he makes me wait in there while he goes to eat with his family. I remember being freaking hungry too. But I was like 8 so I don't speak up. After dinner we continue playing and at some point during the night, I coughed. Probably only once too. Yet his psycho parents who heard it, immediately jump into action. They assume I am sick and from then on, they keep me separated from him. So I spent the rest of the night, alone sleeping on their couch. I remember so badly wanting to go home. In the morning while they ate breakfast and did not offer me anything, I immediately called my sister to come pick me up, parents were out of town. I had never been so happy to leave their house. I was supposed to stay at this kid's house for the entire weekend too. It was one of the worst experiences ever for an 8 years old kid lol. Here's another terrible one that is more in line with the theme of the thread though. So I am friends with this one kid in our apartment building. One night he invites me to go with his family to night church. Not being religious and also being like 9 or 10 years old and curious, I think cool. And say yes. Anyway to keep this story short, the night church was a Pentecostal church. If you are unaware what that means, it's the type of church where people speak in tongues and shit like that. The minister, or whatever you call them, would touch people on their heads and then they would act like they were being possessed. They'd flop on the ground, start speaking nonsense, etc. I'd look over at my friend and his family and they'd be completely into it. I was thinking how is this the same kid I'm friends with? This is weird. I remember being extremely, extremely uncomfortable and wanting to leave so bad. But this is the 90s and I'm probably around 10 years old. I basically have no way to leave. I just have to wait till the service is over and my friend's family drives me home. Like the first story, 
I could not wait to get home and out of there. It was such a creepy experience. Get this. My girlfriend goes to her brother's house to visit his family. After a couple of hours, dinner is ready and her sister-in-law calls everyone to the table except my girlfriend. They had dinner for 45 minutes in the dining while my girlfriend sat politely in the living room, within sight line of where they were eating. Never once did they offer her any of their food or an alternative. Not only did this happen in the US, but I and the South. My grandmother is rolling over in her grave right now. I went over to a friend's house for a sleepover, and when I changed into my pajamas her mom started demanding I put something else on and throw my pajamas out. I was really confused, she was yelling about how my pajamas were sinful and bore signs of the devil. I ended up just calling my mom to take me home because I was so uncomfortable, but that woman just kept scolding us for allowing me to wear sad antic symbols. The symbols on my pajamas? Peace signs. She said they were broken crosses, so clearly a sign of the devil. I had a neighborhood friend that I played on the street with and at school sometimes. Her mom and dad always told me I wasn't allowed to be in the same room as my friend's older brothers because seeing young women was a sin for unmarried men. I was 10 at the most. The youngest of her older brothers was 16. When I was asked by my friend to sleep over for her birthday I was told by her and her mother that I needed to remain in my friend's bedroom. Her mother would bring us food and drinks and take us to go to the bathroom whenever it was safe. I told my sister about it the next day and she told me I wasn't allowed to go near their house or my friend again. To this day I still don't know if it was actually due to culture slash religion or if maybe they just had a really f weird family. Went to stay with distant relatives in Lithuania during winter. It's nothing for them to all get naked in the sauna and pat each other with birch branches then run out and roll in the snow. After a while I just went fuck it and gave in to my inhibitions but at first it was a bit confronting being naked, exposed and vulnerable. On the flip side, their snow chilled vodka was primo which broke the ice so to speak, would 100% do again. Late to the game, but here goes. I had a friend growing up whose parents didn't allow any snacks in the house. Every time he invited me over to spend the night, I was expected to bring boxes of snack food because it could be allowed if brought in by an outsider. And yes, his parents would partake, too. So there was junior high school aged Heidstash bringing boxes of snacks for an entire family to have a cheat night at my expense. When I was in primary school, I made a new friend from Hong Kong. One day she came over to my house for a play date, and when our parents came to pick her up in the evening, my parents invited them all to stay for dinner at ours. They were new immigrants to Australia, and I guess my parents thought they might not have many friends or family here. Anyway, they politely declined and said they didn't want to impose. My parents insisted it was no imposition at all, but they again declined, saying they didn't want to be rude and intrude on our family. We were kind of taken aback, but just assumed maybe they had their own dinner waiting at home and were too polite to say so, we saw them off. My friend later explained that our parents thought my parents weren't being genuine and were only asking out of politeness. The fact that our parents didn't press the issue further was proof that we didn't really want them there. It's not weird, but I thought it was an interesting contrast even as a kid. In the West, when someone offers you hospitality, it's seen as a genuine and voluntary gesture, and it'd be rude to turn it down. Whereas in some cultures, the offer of hospitality is seen as a compulsory courtesy but not necessarily always genuinely meant, so it's impolite to accept it immediately. In the West, it would be impolite to keep insisting after someone's already declined an offer, but in other cultures, you're expected to press the issue a bit and keep insisting to give them a chance to accept if they want to without appearing rude. Work nights for a while. Rented a house in a suburban area with heavy Jewish population. One morning at 8am got a knock at the door. Got home from work at 4am. So, I'm instantly annoyed, so annoyed that I answer the door in my boxers. Three little kids all look up at me. I sighed heavily and used the door to cover my nearly naked body. They squeaked up, can you turn off our fire? At first I thought to tell them to just call the police and then said, wait, do you mean your stove? Was answered in the affirmative. I quickly got dressed, went over and knocked on the door. The wife of the house opened the door and quickly pulled me in by my shirt. I looked around quickly and there was very little furniture in the house. Their kitchen table was a folding table with plastic chair and a bunch of men around it talking about the Islamic Brotherhood. The wife asked me to press one button on her electric stove, did it, then was very briskly pushed out of the house. I understand their religious practices. Still weird. Promptly went back to bed. I'm German and I had several weird interactions during my travels, but I guess the weirded out ones were the hosts, not me. The way I was culturally socialized is to talk to people very blunt and direct. Say what you mean only kind of style. So when I was traveling especially in Asia there were several situations where people for example invited me to come in and have dinner or offered a cup of tea slash coffee or a snack. 
And when I felt like it, I simply agreed and said, yeah, sure sounds great. In more than one situation, I could tell by the looks on their face that they 100% expected me to politely decline and did not really want to invite me for these things. So there were several situations where I sat in other people's houses, had food or drink while they were visibly uncomfortable, which then made me uncomfortable, but of course it was too late to pull back. So, yeah, would be easier when people just offered stuff they really meant to and not offer something you don't want out of politeness. In Germany, if you don't want anyone in your home, you simply not ask them. You say goodbye at the doorstep and close the door. Nobody would be pissed or feel alienated. And on the other hand, when you invite someone and you really feel like it and want the other one to agree, nobody would say no out of politeness and then expect to be asked again. I grew up in a highly Mormon area, so most of my friends in school were Mormon, and I was occasionally invited into their more intimate holiday celebrations, for example. One year, they gave me bags of food and drove me to a random house, then told me I had to go in and deliver the bags to the people inside, a big family who currently have no means of financial support, as a secret Santa. It was a wonderful gesture, but I felt really awkward being asked to do this in a stranger's house, but they asked me to do it for the expressed reason that I was a stranger, and they wouldn't know who had donated the food. I used to have a job that rented a lot of houses and properties in Southern California. Part of my job was meeting with property owners and to close a deal with them. One day I go to this man's house in Laguna Beach, as in his house was on the beach. I was meeting with an insanely wealthy but also insanely nice Asian man who I had met a couple of times before and we had somewhat of a work type relationship. As I begin to bring up the deal to be made, he suggests we walk to the beach first. I was ready to get home, it was Saturday, so we start walking, talking about life etc. He then proceeded to hold my hand, interlocked finger style, for the whole walk. I was originally wielded out by it, but when I brought it up to a co-worker he said it's just a part of their culture. He also made me wear his personal house slippers to be allowed entry into his home. Just cultural differences, but it still cracks me up that the most romantic beach walk I've ever had in my life was within 75 years old something man millionaire. I grew up in the crazy religious house and since Santa Claus was secular, he was completely removed from anything to do with our Christmas. Instead we celebrated Christmas like an actual birthday party complete with cake and singing happy birthday to Jesus. Edit, for all the people correctly describing Santa Claus as Saint Nick, religious figure, my family believed Catholics were going to hell because praying to saints is akin to praying to an idol or false god. Secular was probably the incorrect word, but they definitely saw Saint Nick and the Santa Claus character as a threat to real Christmas. I went over to my friend's house to play D&D in high school, and my friend's mom mad lunch for the seven of us. It was really good. We were just playing D&D and eating tacos, and after we all finished the lunch, everyone started pulling out cash. I was super confused. My friend turned to me and asked, do you have your five dollars? So apparently we were supposed to pay for the meal. I was incredibly embarrassed. One of my other friends ended up paying for me. I never played D&D at that house ever again. Edit, this happened in SoCal. They were just a standard American household as far as I was aware. The food was homemade. D&D is Dungeons and Dragons. It's a role playing game. Also, I can confirm that my friend was not taking the money. I literally saw him give it to his mom. Not sit on the furniture because only the males were allowed to. Meal facing the wall while the three males in the house stood behind me and prayed in a cadence that got louder and louder until they were screaming about how to wear makeup is to create attraction, to create attraction is to create lust and to create lust is to sin. I was 18 and wearing makeup. Legit I thought I was about to be beheaded. Drinking only milk for dinner. Don't get me wrong. I like milk and will freely drink it at times, but one time at my high school girlfriend's house I had dinner. I was helping set the table and her mom started to pour milk in all the glasses. Not wanting to be rude and ask for soda or something I simply said I'll just have water. She replied with the bible says milk is served with supper. No clue if this is a thing or not. It was the first and last time I've ever heard it but the memory has stuck with me 20 plus years later. Edit 1, sorry to all the people who got scammed thinking it was a story about drinking only milk without food. There was food, don't remember what, but I see how the first line can seem otherwise. Edit 2, thank you everyone mentioning slash quoting the McPoyles. I've never heard of them and have only seen a few episodes of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Now I have something new to watch. I could not find anything in the Bible that would regulate this. The only marginally related rule I was able to find was that the Old Testament explicitly forbids to consume milk and meat in the same meal. So, the opposite. It's a non-issue for Christians, though, thanks to Jesus later on waiving all food restrictions. Historically, adults and non-baby children usually drank wine, with water, to supper, at the time. Or simply clean water if they couldn't afford wine. 
There being no drinkable clean water is a myth. Edit. I guess that this was a made-up rule in that family and maybe at some point became a family tradition. Eat your veggies, the Bible says so. Drink your milk, or Jesus is sad. Go to school or God will be angry. Let's be honest. Before the internet and index searches, how would you fact check this? Reading the whole Bible? Hell, no. I'd rather just drink my milk at that point. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.